What's up guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. We're over here at the shop. We're at Randy's shop and we're working on the race car today. If you guys have not followed along, make sure you go to Courtney's web channel. Courtney's right over here. He's helping today too. He went ahead and redone all the front stuff as far as the paint, getting it all back and pretty. Show mod is coming back together. So Randy's on the way now. He's on the way to go pick up a transmission jack. So we're going to be working on this thing. We've got a lot to do. We're going to try to get this thing cranked up, hopefully in the next week or so. Maybe the end of this week, possibly. We might come up here on Saturday and spend like a full solid 10 or 12 hours knocking this thing out. Here we go, guys. Check it out. Go to turbojohnracing.com. Grab yourself some merchandise, comment, like, and subscribe. Go check out Courtney's YouTube channel, The Paint and Paper Hustle. Here we go. Courtney, you've done a jam up job getting this thing. It don't even look like it ever needed color. Uh, Jason Brazel, he done an awesome job rebuilding this thing. Uh, basically this bar over here, all this stuff stayed. He rebuilt this stuff in the front. Got all this going. This is the turbo mount. This is where the oil filter is mounting. He had to do some custom stuff down here on this oil pump. Gonna be a little bit tight getting stuff in here, but this thing moves around a little bit. So I think we're gonna be good to go. Um, now something that's gonna drive Randy crazy. I don't know when we're gonna fix it, but I'm gonna go ahead and show y'all. Y'all see that rust on that, that spud down there? <laughs> Randy is not gonna be able to deal with that. That right there, ooh, oh my God. He's already mentioned it a couple times. I don't know if we're gonna address it right now or not. If we, hey, that's a rat rod spud. Yeah. We're gonna do the rat rod on the show mop. Get off, all this has gotta come back off, pull everything off, take the, the spud out. And then I guess he'll have to powder coat it or something. I don't know exactly what he's gonna do with it. But so the goal today, Randy's on the way to go get a transmission jack. So once he gets the transmission jack, we're gonna go ahead and switch the converter back in there. Transmission's in there. Motor is in here, but we do not have everything uh, permanently attached. Uh, we're gonna also try to go ahead and get the front of the motor stuff back on, get it back the way Jason Brazel had it. Maybe go ahead, well, we're not quite ready to stab that uh, cam sink in there. He did go ahead and get the MSD cam sink for it so that we could go ahead and just do the cam sink up there instead of having to modify all this bracketry down here uh, where everything's at. Courtney, how was it getting the front end back in? That's, that's, the, <coughs> that's the easy part. The rest of it is uh, fixing and painting everything else. So that, it wasn't bad. And it's gonna be all steel, all glass, most likely, we're thinking. He hasn't announced that. Oh, has he not announced that yet? Are you going to edit it or are you going to roll with it? No, we'll roll with it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so There's it, some people in my video, if you read the comments, uh, somebody corrected somebody. They were like, is Randy going off still on glass? And I put the zip mouth emoji and somebody else jumped in really fast and they're like, no, all he is just got steel fenders. And I'm like, I zipped the emoji. Again. <laughs> <laughs> so right now that's all he's got. But to make this thing back legit, all steel, all glass. So uh, all steel, all glass was originally the concept was to make it more street oriented. But whoever come up with the design of all steel, all glass did a terrible job of rulemaking. First, they didn't put no weights on it. Um, second is they, did, they didn't care about chassis cars. All they cared about is if you got steel fenders, steel doors, roll up windows in the side, quarter panels, normal glass, front can be optic armor, back can be optic armor, the hood can be carbon fiber or fiberglass, the front end can be carbon fiber or fiberglass, and so, and the bumpers and the deck lid. So, uh, this thing, I mean, it's got everything to be all steel, all glass. Uh, this thing right here, he's taking these out, putting regular glass in it. That'll add a couple pounds, but not much. But man, oh boy, this, yeah. We, I wish, honestly, them, them boys running all steel, all glass now, running 420s, 430s. That's right where we're at, because otherwise, the, the small block boosted, did you see where Vendetta just put down uh, 3,000 horsepower on the hub dyno? 3,000 horsepower, guys. That's who we have to race otherwise. So, uh, wow, which, I, and I mean, his is his car is a rocket. So uh, yeah, that's kind of where we fit is right now in the unlimited all steel, all glass, no turbo limits, which that's one of the things too. This is the turbo kit over here. Randy got his turbo kit redone. Um, of course, Jason Brazel, this is like a work of art the way this thing is done. Uh, turbo fresh back from Precision. This is still the 118, the Gen, Gen 2 118 with the uh, H trim turbine wheel.
All right, guys, we got that thing up on the lift. What we got to start doing now, this thing's got O-rings in the head, but it also had silicone on it. So we've got to clean that stuff off. We got to take the O-rings out, clean the silicone off. And then we got to decide if we're going to put the silicone back on it or not. In theory, the O-ring should be good enough. And that's the reason you put the O-rings on it instead of the silicone is so that it will seal. So uh, we also, we need to retort the heads when we're changing the valve springs. But that's one of the things you can do those from right up here no problem so that's going to be okay i think uh all in here is good uh, i think this is going to all be fine no big issues so all this is i think permanently assembled so we should be fine on this i thought we were going to have to reseal this but it looks like at some point it already got resealed that's uh, got a lot of silicone on it that clear 100 percent silicone jason redid these mounts to move the oil filter the oil tank up a little bit uh, he also added some bars underneath the bottom of the car uh, gave it a little bit more structural stability um, so this is a good thing this is should help tie the chassis together a little bit better i uh, went to the lower torque boxes uh, tied all that together and i think he also added another bar from the upper torque box over here too to give us a little bit more stability on here so now what's happening when the lower bar is pushing the car and the upper bar is pulling then it's pulling on the actual chassis. We're not depending on any sheet metal to actually tie this stuff together. So this should drastically improve uh, everything. Uh, of course, we still got to get the, the wishbone back on. Now this is a triangulated four link. What a triangulated four link means is you can see the lower bars are angled this way, the upper bars are angled that way. So it is perfectly centered side to side, but he also runs a wishbone just in case. There. Of course, he's got minister shots on the back. Uh, these things are awesome long travel lots of work these things work good and so this is going to be awesome there goes why we got to pull the transmission out we didn't have the torque converter when we put that thing back in so i got to put the flex plate on it torque converter back in it and then uh pretty much that'll be be it the transmission will be in All right, boys, the transmission is out. This is a Mark Mickey Turbo Glide, Turbo 400 with only two speed, completely aftermarket. It's got the big input shaft. So we got his flex plate on, mid plate. So in order to do the spacing on this, we had to use this spacer as well. Uh, at some point, he's going to probably just get a little bit thicker. What this is plus this, and then we'll be set on our converter spacing. But um, so all this is good to go now. Everything's tight. This is the Mark Mickey. The converter was messed up. Uh, I don't know if y'all remember before the crash, we had a couple really long uh, staging episodes. Uh, two of them plus, there were seven seconds a piece. And so it ended up burning all the bearings up. And uh, it's like $4,500 repair. This is how you know it's expensive. Look, Mark, look, that is a, two piece foam that comes out i didn't even realize also it's got wrenches there so um you know that's a warning sign it, it is what it is guys i mean when, when we race these things you know you just have to have to be careful um none of these cars have transmission coolers on them uh we cool them down in between passes it is what it is i mean it's racing it's part of it so it is fixed ready to go m and m mark mickey that thing's bad to the bone and those of you i don't know there's a 1632 stator in it. The thing's like 11 inch, it might be a 10 inch. But this, Randy's car spools up real fast because it's a big motor. And so uh, usually we don't have any issues uh, spooling it. Now the dump valves definitely help this thing spool up dramatically. The dump valves are really, really good. And he's got a two stage dump valve system. Basically one of these is external dump and one of them is internal dump. And so what happens uh, when we go on the trans brake, uh, the, the Devin's got all this wired up. So we just got one connector to, to hook up to everything or two connectors, this one, and then this one. And then we got a couple of sensors for our uh, actual, the readings so we can read pressures. But basically what happens is uh, when we're spooling it up, both of these are open. When we get to, uh, I think I got it set to when we get the two or three pounds of boost, one of them closes, which that's usually in about a second, second and a half. And then when we, uh, the other one, we pulse 
as we go. Randy, what are you doing? Are you having fun? Are you excited? Uh, I'm trying to find all the stuff. That's in the <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's been, dude, I, I ain't going to lie. I ain't, I ain't gonna show, what is all the dirt? What have you been, is that from the lawnmower? Has the lawnmower been in there? The lawnmower's been in the trailer. <laughs> Look, yeah, I, 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 I'm a Pueblo spot, dude. This, I, did you pay for this car? He's been cutting grass. <laughs> He's been cutting grass. Hey, so. New side hustle. I'm a blow spot up. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I walked in there, I was like, I was like what happened in the trailer? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never seen it full of dirt. That's the first time. Nice <laughs> and you, I, and, and actually, you make a lot of money cutting grass. You got like the eighty-two. How, how wide is it? Ninety-six inches 16. wide. Yeah, six. <laughs> Ninety-six. That's like eight foot wide. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're getting it together. So what's the game plan, Randy? How, how far? We're going to get the transmission back in tonight. Yeah. We're going to start putting the header. We might get that far. Okay, look, Randy. I, mm -hmm. I pointed it out. Um, I don't know. You're going to see it on the video. That's all good. Okay. So I don't know if you're happy with the, uh, what are we going to do with the, with the rat rod spud? <laughs> you need, do you need, don't even know what I'm talking about? You know no, what I'm talking about. What talking about. You don't even know. Okay. No. I'm going to edit it. I ain't, okay. You ain't going to see it then. No. Okay. Look, look under there at that fuel pump mount. Fuel pump mount? The, where the fuel pump goes in to, to the timing cover. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> I didn't think you would have forgot about it. I got it. it. He's got another one. I got another one. It's staying in there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going back out. <laughs> Brandy's he, he ain't going to be able to sleep now. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have reminded you. It's I could have. I would have swore no. that you would have never forgot that. No, I didn't. I got it. The brand new one's in there. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Man. My bad. The, the, the rat rod spud. Look, just so y'all can see it one more time. Okay. That way, when Randy, when somebody says, "Man, you've got this beautiful Pro Mod," he can say, "Man, have you seen my fuel pump spud?" Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna make it go fast. Randy, while we're giving nightmares, do you remember when you got that brand new converter and I was in the back of Brian's shop and you walked in and the converter was sitting just like this and I had the side grinder on it? <laughs> that was the quickest U turn I've ever seen him make. And look, it's still, it ain't the best, but it works. Um, and look, Mark Mickey didn't even change it. He didn't even change our bolt or nothing. So, I mean, it's still kind of hacked up. But so basically, me and Courtney were just talking about, this is the, the pilot bushing. Mm -hmm. This goes on here. Uh, if you don't have this, it makes an issue with the alignment. If that's not on there, it makes an issue with, see how that going in the back of the crank. The small block Ford is a lot smaller. And so that wouldn't actually go. So it wouldn't align. So you would be depending on these to keep it in a circle, but you need it to be hub centric, I think is what they call it. What you have to worry about is what happens with this thing is when this goes in the back of the crankshaft and then this goes on here. What I was grinding on when Randy saw it, it was actually this. This is how much I clearanced it. When we put the torque converter in to start with, it was up here like this. The spacing was not correct. And so it was going to knock the thrust out. We didn't have the required spacing here. And so this thing, if you don't lubricate it, what will happen? This never spins on here. This always just slides in and out. And as, so you set it up, say right here, torque converter flexes and pushes when it locking down, and then it goes to here and then it's back out. And so th this is the movement you get on these adapters. You don't get spinning because it's locked in the crankshaft and it's locked on the torque converter. Well, it's not really locked. It, it potentially may, it's all going together. It may move a little bit, but when you get friction, it's the friction of this going in and out. And that's what causes issues. And so we lubricate both of these, the small end that goes in the back of the crankshaft and the big end. And so, and then that way it can give you just a little bit of movement. And there's not much, but you know, if this thing, I think Courtney was saying he saw somewhere on either John Doc or Justin, Justin Swanstrom's Swanstrom. channel. Well, he was talking about it. I don't remember who I seen where it welded. But it actually got welded and they had to pull the crank out to get the torque converter out. Well, that would suck. Yes. But yeah, so, and, and Mark Mickey, you know, we could probably, we could probably get Mark to get us this exact thickness now and replace that. But I guess he saw that our redneck engineering was okay. All right, guys, we couldn't let it stand the way it was. So we took all this stuff off of the front. Uh, cleaned it with some scotch bright. Courtney smeared some red grease on it for the time being. Uh, they'll keep it from rusting. And so I think that's going to be good for now. At least it's not hairy like it was a minute ago. Randy had forgot about it, man. I, I feel kind of bad. And so this thing is super easy. Uh, so this is an adapter he got from, I think he got it from Alki Digger. 
and basically this thing is just spudded out and uh it's got the hex drive and it goes directly into the fuel pump to turn the fuel pump super easy all right guys well we got sidetracked we we got it back together randy the fuzz is off we, we got the fuzz off of the piece courtney had a good idea we didn't want to take it all the way back apart we took this basically uh just all the way off we had to take this off and this thing off and we just cleaned it with a scotch bright real good the red or the gray well, i don't remember what color it was i think it was both and then we just smeared a little bit of grease on it anti-corrosion preventative uh protectant oh look i just I, I just i just coined that look we need to highlight that and start selling it dude we got this this awesome <laughs> we got this anti-corrosive stuff man you, you put it on all your stuff and it will never rust on you again it kind of stays we're marketing it we got it for sale all right so we did that so now we're getting back to the transmission so courtney has already lubed this thing up real good so we're going to go stick this thing in the back of the, the transmission or the back of the, the, well, it's too low. Okay. We're fixing to put the transmission back in. So the transmission is in. Been working on that. Courtney got this all bolted up back here in the back. This thing right here is pretty jam up. This is a like it's half moon, and basically um, this is threaded on this side, and you bolt this in, and that whole piece comes off. That is pretty trick. So I just got to tighten that up. Got all the torque converter bolts um, are not in yet, but the bell housing bolts are. Spacing we just measured our torque converter spacing. Spacing. Uh, the way you do this, I've went over it before in a couple other videos uh, on torque converter spacing, but the real down and dirty is this is slid all the way in to the transmission, and then you have to slide it all the way forward to make sure it goes all the way up against the flex plate. And if it does, then you can measure this distance. And we know that it's bottoming out here and it's bottoming out here. So this distance right here was 172 thousandths. Ideally, most torque converter manufacturers say somewhere between 125 and 187. So we're pretty good there. Now, if this was bottomed out without touching that, if it bottomed out early, then that's what I was showing you earlier. What Randy's was doing before is it wouldn't go in because it was bottoming out in the crankshaft. And so basically you would not have it. And if I shim this, basically you would have no play there. So you just have to be careful and aware when you're putting the, the torque converter stuff in. Uh, Randy's going to get the drive shaft now. Uh, Courtney six and slide the drive shaft in it. It does fit. There's your your shot when you look at it straight from the yoke. So it looks like we got plenty of clearance. So I think this is going to work out pretty good. We made some progress today. Not too bad. It's closer now than what it was. What do you think? Coming along, getting closer. A few more things to do. A little oddball in in things. I mean, it's, you know, putting the race car back together. Our game plan is. Uh, we're going to come over here Saturday. We've got to take the valve covers off of it. Uh, we're going to retort the heads, and we're going to also change valve springs. Andy, have you ordered another throttle cable yet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that one's a little short. We could probably hack something together. No, no, I'll just hope. I'll get one. I guess. I mean, I don't even know how they're how they're doing that stuff. Yeah, I'm going to call the folks at Acupad tomorrow. Right. They probably have a bracket in a little disappointed I didn't ask. <laughs> right. Yeah, what do you want this with? I mean, that thing is, that throttle body is freaking monster. Look, it's so big it was hitting the tape. <laughs> that thing is huge. Look at that. Look at that thing. Would you look at it? Would you look at it? All right, guys, we're done. We're out of here. We'll see y'all soon. Later.